second. It's game. okay. I mean, they definitely think Tiny's going to be at four, and that's why they picked this DP. Mm -hmm. Very curious if that's going to be their mid. Uh, what would you like decent. to see these heroes go lane wise? It depends. Right like, this Tiny doesn't have to go core right now. Like, it's up to T1 right now to see if they want to outdraft, Dyer but I don't want them to go too hard in either direction. Morphling. All right, well, they picked Morphling. So I think they believe that Pango is off lane in this case. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're also guessing that DP's going <laughs> mid with the Tiny. Morph is a hero that is getting a little Ten more popularity. It seems to be struggling really hard in laning stage in most of the games. Five seconds yep. remaining. So th that is always a little bit of a concern. But I think T1 are just going to suck it up with the tiny mid versus the DP and pick a strong laner to lane with this Morphling. Mm -hmm. Does Morphling win against a lane of like DP Dawnbreaker though? Because if they do just put Lelouch on the Pango mid, snap to five, I feel like Dawn DP could be a massively strong lane. Uh, I don't think he's going to win that lane, no, that's why I think they're taking a gamble, right? Yeah. I think they're assuming Pango's in the off lane, so they picked Morph versus Pango, which is a very good matchup for the Morphling. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Lars can switch it up if they want to, and I wouldn't be opposed to it. But then they'd be putting the Pango, what, versus mid versus the Tiny? And that's, I think, what T1 Ten wanted. So it really just depends on, like, each team can get an advantage depending on which situation they decide to go for. Is there a more favorable like a situation for Polaris? Where would the Pango be better off going? Um, for Polaris, I I think it's always better to pressure Morph and just yep. put Pango mid versus Tiny. Like he he might not win that matchup. It might be favorable for Tiny, but he's still gonna get his level. Mm -hmm. It's Lelouch on Pango. We haven't seen that in a while. At least I haven't personally. Love to see him stick to his more comfort heroes. Yeah. Last time I covered Polaris, it's remaining. like I don't think. Polaris was ever good at helping mid lane, but they remaining. were really good at, you know, Lelouch is really good at helping his side lanes, right? Mm -hmm. And DP is a mid hero that you kind of want to play around. So I'd be a little afraid if they do the DP mid in that regard, especially if Pango has a bad game, yeah. they don't help mid, and I don't know what they're going to be doing in the mid game. Mm -hmm. Well, Luna last pick for Polaris. Last time we saw her, she was paired with the Visage, I feel. This is a really, really Ten nice Luna pick. Mm -hmm. you, you're basically just running like a very fast team lineup. You Five have DPs remaining. to take buildings with you. You have team fight. You have damage in your snap fire, all early, all like level based. Um, you're gonna be able to take Roshan really easily with the exorcism, with the um, snap E. Like Luna's gonna enable all of that. She can run with her team and she can like take objectives. She, they just like they can just do a lot quite early, and they could pretty like. On paper, I, they can outpace this Morphling. Potentially, but they're doomed late game. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> doomed. <laughs> so, like, they they do have to, like, do everything that Cheap just said and play really fast, because mm -hmm. one versus one matchup, Luna loses really hard to Morph, and then later on, they actually did not draft a single Black Bull counter, except for maybe Pango with the Basher, so Luna is not very happy when she gets Black Bulled. So what, yeah. what window timing are we looking for Polaris? Like, what is the absolute latest you feel the game can be in their favor? It's not really about, like, the duration of the game. It's more of, like, keeping the net worth manageable. Okay. All right, so, like, generally speaking, keep it under that 10k mark, you know? <laughs> yep. And try not to go high ground on Polaris unnecessarily and throw the game. So, mm -hmm. like, uh, Dota's just not a game where I feel like you can put a time stamp on no draft has an expiration date, and pretty much is what I'm saying. And yep. you just need gold advantage. And like, no matter what you have, if you have enough items, there's a lot of items that counter heroes in the game. Mm -hmm. If you have that, you should be fine. So it's really just like keeping a gold advantage and not getting in a situation where <laughs> both drafts are even. Yeah. It's gonna be a problem. Well, last pick for T1 is the Razor Sheep. It's okay. It's last pick. Okay. It's you okay. like it a little bit more? All right, great answer. Mm. So, it's <laughs> so don't put her on the spot any longer. We'll bring in our classes. <laughs> it's going to be Zyclops and Gods joining us. Thank you so much. Zyclops, uh, do you like the Razor pick or the Luna pick more here? Ah, oh, that's a very good question. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> I don't know, man. The, uh, the Razor for me. Um, okay. Yeah, for, 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 for this one. And for yourself, mm. Gods, uh, which side do you like a little bit more? 
Um, you know, I, I just feel like I have to say T1, even ignoring draft, just because Polaris have been on such a downwards trend. But mm -hmm. I, I don't mind Polaris's draft this game. Um, I like the hero swap up. They're sending the Death Prophet mid against the Razor, so I feel like Polaris have done some nice little adjustments with their lanes. Okay. Let's say first series of DPC, right? Let's pretend we've got all the way back to week no, one. I'll say right now, oh. I don't even need to go back to week one. I think Polaris have got this in the bag. Oh, okay. I think all their right. lineup's better. There's okay. no playmaking calls on T1's side. What are they going to do? <laughs> all right, I guess that's your answer about the Razor last pick then. You're all in Polaris. The other two are T1. Fear? Uh, T1 for sure. I don't oh, think okay. Polaris right. can take this one. It's way too hard to execute their lineup, I think. Okay. Well, uh, Sheep is going to be the odd <laughs> one out. The only one going for Polaris is we do head into game one. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this is this is a very interesting game. We've done very interesting lineup of heroes, even though we didn't get to see the native profess and all the stuff, but we still have Razor and also Luna. And, um, you know, guys, this is actually that second time that they met each other. The first time was back then, like four months ago, uh, in the in the um, third play place and fourth place tiebreaker in the uh, DBC Division 1. And it mm. was Team T1 won over Team Polaris 2 0 with a Storm Spirits in both games. But, well, well, we have no Storm in this patch, so maybe <laughs> the, rose, the result is going to be different. I like how you say, uh, you know, I thought you were going to say there's no Storm in this game, but it, it really is this patch. That there <laughs> is just, he's gone. He's done. People yeah, are, had enough done, Storm. Man. I mean, see you later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, these I think these teams overall know each other pretty well. You can hear them talk a bit about in the interviews where, like, I feel like Polaris, their interview this series was much more confident than their previous ones. Like, just knowing oh, yeah. T1. They're already eliminated too, so they kind of... I always feel like these 0-6 teams can be scary to go up against just because they're playing with no pressure. Like, there's very little at stake for Polaris, but as long as they're, like, not doing like clowny drafts and they're taking the game seriously it just means they get to play more free and like just with no expectations you know no weight on your shoulders so um i do think this series is gonna be closer than people expect yeah just one one word one last ride their first rides were not particularly good either i mean uh, yeah <laughs> i mean they were you know going back to that tour one they were decent you know they had some moments where they were close like you say they or last yeah. year they were close to making it to the major they were in the tiebreaker yes. like they were so close but um, the, you know that tie tiebreaker match and pretty convincingly <laughs> lost to the t1 yeah. it, it was storm two games and they even I got the um, uh, uh, storm life stealer bomb <laughs> in game <laughs> number two so um yeah that uh, i believe that they <laughs> that's that actually hurt them a lot i mean if we are uh, take, Going back in the time machine and we actually changed the results. If if it was Paris won that tiebreaker match back then, do you think the part, the causes of these two teams is going to be different today? Oh, for sure. Like those small one match can just change. Like you know, they went through these roster changes this season and they oh, haven't looked the same no. since changing up their roster for two or three. So um, I think if they went to that major, maybe they get some good experience there and decide to stick together. Who knows? Yeah, um, but they, you know, you mentioned those tiebreakers. There's your motivation. If you're Polaris, you, you remember those tiebreakers dead. losing, getting denied going to the major by T1, and you want revenge. Yeah. So this is your chance. Because if T1 lose, <laughs> they're not going to the major. Their the only hope to go to the major is to like win all their remaining oh, series. Oh, so. yeah. That does, that's a motivation right there, man. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Knock them out. Knock them down. Yeah. And we'll see if they can do just that. Yeah. And the uh, one interesting fact about T1 in this game I is the, uh, despite the big hero pull of Gabby um, uh, this season, this is actually the first time that Gabby playing Morphling in uh, in competitive scenes in three months. This is actually okay. his first game. Oh, yeah, there we go. Well, he is a level 30 Grandmaster tier Morphling oh, player okay. from Pubs, so <laughs> yeah. I have no doubt he's... I mean, that's like every SEA carry. They, SEA carries love their Morphling. This is the region uh. that used Morphling Shaker more than anyone else. These guys, yeah, they're all Morphling players. Uh. But um, perhaps he saw, I think it was 23 Savage played some Morphling, so maybe he got some inspiration there, mm. and he's like, all right, it's my turn. Let's play some Morph. Yeah, let me become the Grandmaster. Mm. Good one. You know... 
just now I I listened to the panels and I really like one um, sentence from here. He, he said that the no draft has an expiration date. Um, mm. Do you think so? Do you like it? Yeah, I, I think it's a really good point to make. Like, mm -hmm. even if you have the early game draft, if you get far enough ahead, yeah, because of how crazy Dota is with all the items, like you can make, you can basically cover your draft's weaknesses if you have enough gold. Ah, oh, yeah. Just uh, just like we, we we see Army Genesis playing the uh, position one patch in the uh, season opening match, <laughs> and still win at fifty minute game. Yeah. Dude, it's like the the no tell thing. Anything can work, you know. You just gotta mm. get creative sometimes. And... All right, we are looking at the top lane right here. Safer on Marcy. It looks like they're getting harassed bad by Paris. Yeah, no. Too crazy happening in these lanes. I mean, looking at just CS from these first couple of minutes, you can see both mid and safe lane going really well. Luna and Death Prophet. Like these two heroes should have a uh, pretty good lane. Death Prophet being put against the Razor, good purpose, and Luna just known for her strong laning. And Dawnbreaker, same thing. Dawnbreaker has just been like the queen of the laning stage. This hero just mm. dominates lanes. Um, and then come mid game, you get like this Holy, holy Locket Axe build typically. We saw it both games um, earlier today in Div 2, and it just gives you this this really good team fight. Like, I don't, I don't, I think the reason they don't pick anything to cancel BKB Black Hole is because they feel like they already have an answer with the Solar Guardian. Ah, I see. That's a good point that you. Made it up right there, and the uh, Dawnbreaker coming back to the scene and it's getting more and more popular. We are looking at the <laughs> bottom lane right here. Never mind, Chill yep. Crash gonna be used to spam and force um, Tiny yep. and the rest away from the farming zone. Small ping pong around, around lane. You know, he shield crashes, then he gets cookie, then he's just, you know, he's just being thrown around like a little ragdoll. Mm. There's a lot of ping pong heroes in the game anyway. Yeah, Marcy with the rebound. Pause. Pengalier with the ultimate. That's the ultimate uh, <laughs> ping pong Ping pong just, player. <laughs> just bounce around wherever you can in the team fight. But all right. The problem for the Pengo. This is the all sacrifice. Right. Like, I think there's something that Fear mentioned with the lanes is like, you know, you the team each team is going to get advantage in somewhere. Like picking the morphling and playing it into the Pengalier is a very more favored matchup. Um, but at the same time, like Death Prophet, you want Death Prophet mid versus Razor, but you also want Death Prophet in the offlane versus Morph. So Pingo's gonna have a rough lane, kind of wherever he went this game. Do you think he would be able to, you know, crawl back during the mid game? And uh, I think so. the, oh wait, lane. Off lane about to go down for that Luna. He's just walking away with a few hits. That's oh, oh no man, <laughs> he had the movement speed. It's just awesome. 325 nice. actually safe life safer can he do a little bit of a rebound yes he can Whoa. and oh my safer got them you see that he, throw yeah he walked back in i xavius was like yeah i'll salve you mate but uh, I, zephyr may pay the price but he's still okay and he's got a rebound he just needs somebody to jump off so that was a big thing there is cuckoo came over to give him a rebound target because like Luna just walked back in. Like, okay, my Dawnbreak is here with a salve. I'll, I'll run back, but Marcy rebound instantly takes off the salve and gets the kill. So a lot of resources lost there. That kind of completely threw away their advantage. They were winning this top lane, but now things are going to start to look a little bit shaky. Yeah, that was a little bit underestimated the power of the Marcy. And also that Kuku moving in, rebound, and now at the bottom lane, it seems to be... Uh, an okay lane now for Team Forest. Just keep on, make sure that Pangolia get some farm uh, to make up the loss on top. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yeah, we'll see uh, TP back in from the Dawnbreaker, fighting into the Eidolons here. Doesn't quite get them though. He managed to unsummon, well, they timed out just before he was gonna clear them out. T1. I, I have seen T1 games, um, maybe a couple of match before this one, and, and I see a lot of... Oh, wait, this one first rebound. Oh, this pose on two. Natsumi is through tree line. Uh, he, he'll be fine. Yeah, barely survived. Xavier's doing a good job Radiance with the Starbreaker combo. What is going on Who's over there? Kill I'm him. shooting him, Lelouch. Come on, bro. Oh, okay. 
Well, and Marcy also it. fighting another target here. Sefer yeah. rebounded this pause, toss him back. Waiting for White Mod to move in for Avalanche. Oh, the, the neutral. The ghost was slowing him. Avalanche, can he? Yes, it is. Perhaps Easy kill will rebound him. But he get another one. Savius moving out of the lane just to get next pawn. Down to the river. It's 4 no. Dude, this Marcy is just having such an amazing game. Like, finding all the kills top, rotating mid. Tiny, same thing. I mean, less like active, but that TP to the mid lane to save the Razor and turn the kill around onto Lelouch was huge for Carl's game. He's now going to haste run on, on Razor. He's ahead in terms of his experience. Like, he's having a great time all of a sudden in this mid lane, all thanks to that TP from the time. And now Carl, give it all up in the middle lane with a plasma field. Base the exorcism. That's what the haste rune does. Like, that's how impactful this haste is. Razor can just run at you and kill you. The only reason he doesn't is because of exorcism, but now it's on cooldown for Lelouch. He's not going to get much tower damage in here. I think he's just going to farm the creeps. There is Those. double support here for Polaris, but it just doesn't really feel like a good place for them to force some action right now. Yeah, it looks like Lelouch trying to force the action. He's diving in with the, a lot of exorcism and the doors, and they are connected. With the Spirit Siphon Cow dropping low, was bitten by the Ghost. But he was too fast to just chase him down. Yeah, yeah he kind of walked back in and hung around a bit long there. I think Carl maybe just a bit, feeling a bit too confident once his hate room wore off. He definitely did not want to get close to the Exorcism. But no damage done to this mid-tier 1 tower. It's still more or less fully healthy. Dyer's That's the big one. And Gabby, I mean, Morphling is just free farming. Like, if you go into the mid game, even on farm, it's going to heavily favor T1 because Morphling doesn't really have many counters this game. Yeah, so another thing is Polaris about the uh, the mid tier one tower. They have to take it down as soon as possible to just prevent that mid tier one tower attack. to be taken down because a Luna is going to need a lot of times inside of a triangle safely. Yeah, and we'll see which way Luna goes. It looks like she is going to go Mask of Madness, leveling up the Glaive. So she is going to be playing that more greedy farming style. Mm. Trying to hit, like, probably an early, like, Mask of Madness, maybe Man to BKB timing. But you can't play too greedy when there's Morphling on the other side. Like, this Morphling it will eat you alive. Um, the itemizations of Team T1 in the middle game, you think um, everyone just need to rush BKB just to be safe from the uh, Luna? Medical um, spells. There's what Pengalier too. So this and Pengo Snapfire. I think definitely BKB makes a lot of sense. Um, I think mm -hmm. the question is like how early Cuckoo goes it. He's got the Wraith Pack queued up first, which is oh. kind of typical Enigma itemization. Um, but it, the question is, does he want to play around the black hole or not? If he wants to play around black Radiant's hole, he goes BKB Blink, or he can play attack. around like getting lots of auras and team items go into like a mech or whatever for his team if he even wants. I, I like the idea of playing for BKB Blink because there's nothing other than the Pengo Basher to actually cancel it. And never mind, it's going to take him a while to farm a Basher. He's not having the best game on Pengo. Oh no. At, at the same time as we are talking, Morphling farming non-stop at the bottom lane. Gabby yep. now leading on the network. Almost 4k, yeah. And meanwhile, the mid one is jumping in. Rebound, this port, Avalanche and the toss. Spirit Siphon connected. Uh, I think they can, they can stand for a yeah. while. Uh, this is a good card again this time around for uh, Furries. And finish that race with a Crypt Swarm. Maybe they use this opportunity to just push the high ground and deal the damage to the tower. I'm not sure they if they have enough damage to take down the tower at one go. Mm, it's tricky. They, they've lost the Creep Wave, so I don't think so. Mm. And Lelouch is going to prioritize getting the rune, so... He gets a regen rune, so it's another exorcism not used for a tower, but that one, you got the razor kill. I think that's the thing. Yeah. You either gotta kill kill a core or get an objective. Um, and that was an initiation for T1. You can see like their playmaking with Razor, Nick, uh, Enigma, and Morphling, it's just like a little bit limited. Like they're relying on their supports to make moves, which is okay for now, but at some point they're gonna need some farm and get their blink daggers. Marcy and Tiny, both pretty blink dependent heroes. Picking a very aggressive support, oh, a rebound and a dead spawn. It's a very nice one by Sethler. That is perfect. Uh, a black hole for the first time in this game just to stop. Pangolier, never mind, gone. Xavier's moving in, swinging his hammer around, looking to save his teammate, but his teammate's already gone. Lelouch cannot find anyone inside the tree line. Nice. 
quick kill, get out. These early black holes, just to kill it, get a solar kill, it always feel totally fine. You're not really at this point where, I mean, you can't Dyer's get multi-hero black holes without attack. a blink, typically. Um, and in the early game, we're not seeing, like, big 5v5, so... Killing the core, slowing down the pango. Yeah, and he's pango back. And he's coming back, star. seeking for the revenge. And now this time, he turned the rolling thunder on him for Kyle. And that's another death yeah. for Kyle. Added up in. Oh. Also having a rough mid-game here. His lane was yeah. fine, and he had the help from the tiny, but... Top lane. Uh oh, more action coming their way. Yep. Xavius gone. Lelouch. It's so hard to take that Lelouch down at the moment. <laughs> that Spirit Siphon <laughs> keep on just drain everyone dry. Yeah. And uh, after all these time, all the uh, small fight happens. Gabby farming free on the bottom lane, and he's just got the tower. Yeah, he's so massive Radiant this game. It is a big, big worry. And that's the thing, like, you can put Indeed. your effort and focus onto the Razor mid, but Carl's probably just looking over at his morph every single time he's dead, like, waiting to respawn, he's like, oh, my morph is got the, you know, the best game imaginable. <laughs> yes. And Razor going forward to BKB for sustain. Uh, he is gonna... Uh, he, he, he losing to, to absorb all the damage for his teammates, and, and next yeah. thing you know, Morphling already cyclone in, and then... Pow, kapow, hit everyone. It's crazy. Rise. On top, uh, they're up to something. It's just more like um, changing the, the place to farm for Morphling. Yep. Yeah, I think he doesn't want to push this bottom lane, go into the tier 2 is just too deep, and top lane, he can go into this Radiant's jungle now and also pressure attack. the top tier 1. Never mind, Rolling. may get caught out here. <laughs> Roaring Thunder is ready. All right. Inside the free line, I see the target. I hear the go of the Rolling Thunder out. Perfect play by Nevermind, but can the follow-up damage be Let's enough dance. to take anyone down, Team T1? T1 spreading it out, making it very hard to just land in an AOE spell for Team Porridge. They used every and ultimate. Rolling Thunder, Exorcism, <laughs> Kisses. That's really bad. They needed... Uh, I mean, they were really relying on Pangalia to roll and stun some people, but he had oh. nothing to bounce off. So he gets the initial stun, but then there's no follow-up. Oh, and now Pangolier instead getting this post in. Solar Guardians come down, can he save the Pangolier? But the damage from that Morphling, well far Morphling, full grown Morphling, it's too hard. And take that never mind down high, but at the back line, the lose will get rid of that White Mon. Moving into the three line, a Sefer. Oh man, he throw, he throw the judo on that Lelouch. He was hit by the plasma field and Kyle moving in instead. Lelouch not gonna make it. Fall this time around. Three Down. for Fast Team Porus. Yep. I mean, Gabby just Dyer's finished off like two kills by himself attack. on the back lines. Like, sure, Death Prophet runs in and kills a tiny, but Death Prophet essentially trades her life for a support, um, thinking she can TP out, but Zephyr has just been on point. 304, his Marcy has been like Dyer's the big playmaker of this game. Fall. Like, very impressed with how he's played around this top lane. Um, and yeah, we, we see what Morphin can do. This hero. It, you waveform in, what's, what's going to kill you? There's just not enough damage, not enough control. Radiance middle tower. Um, you know, it is just a game where he's just not afraid. And the carry matchup, usually that's where you're like, okay, <coughs> maybe an enemy carry can outscale him. Dyer's it's a Luna. That is like is a dream attack. matchup for this morning. Oh, man. And also, we didn't even Radiance talk about the raid pack in the team fight. <laughs> Nobody yep. has time to just take that raid pack down. <laughs> <laughs> just chills there, because, yeah. Uh, that Morphling hit like a truck, man. At least, he's is... got some stack. Yeah, a lot of stacks, some good farm. And still behind the Morphling just because of how good Morphling's game is. This is like the catch-up farm. But I think the big thing for Polaris in this Luna draft is they wanted to play from ahead. Like, you don't... Like, you know, with your Lu Luna having a bad matchup and not scaling as well, you need to go up to... They need this next team fight. Their next round of ultimates have to win them a big fight, get them some objectives, and ideally get them Roshan fairly early. They've yet to take a single tower, so... At least get a big win before any anyone of Team T1 get a BKB. Uh, that Eclipse still works fine, but look at that. T1 playing attacking on Team Porus. Avalanche miss, rebound missed. Now they have to regroup. Okay. Uh, they're sending in Nevermind, they're rolling Thunder, aiming for that Enigma Solar oh, Guardian. They're gonna get rid of Enigma first, the shooting Bonnie but kisses in. And Enigma, black hole for only two seconds, but that was just enough to destroy Team Paris. Kyle with a double kill, Lelouch gonna be the next one. And Morphling 
daily damage non-stop. Paris, Marfi, waveform down to the river, kill never more. And it's three for two. But the thing is, Radiant all these experience awesome. and gold and kills goes to Gabby the Marfling. Yeah. It's just Gabby who's remaining top. And the Luna comes in and dies, so like they lose two cores of flare. Like Enigma attack. dying is kind of whatever, like it's not a, not a hero that they're really prioritizing that much farm on. And even that like half a second to one second black hole, did, they got some good damage out. Like he forced them to basically like throw spells at him because that black hole, if you don't kill the Enigma there, you know, you lose the fight to black hole. So they throw all the spells at the Enigma, means Morphling is kind of ignored. Gabby gets to clean up mm. and T1 just, it feels like, you know, they're, they're too far ahead, particularly around this Morphling. And I love that they're bringing Gabby to these fights. Often you'll see a carry have a good start like this and just play by himself. Energy. No, he's, he's looking to play with his team. Yeah, his itemization is, is also like the uh, old school Dota 1 Morphling. The uh, power trade a little bit with the right band and go straight to the mental style. I remember back then, uh, sometimes Morphling loved to go for the uh, power trade first and then just straight to a Lincoln Sphere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that era, Lincoln's you build. remember. <laughs> yep. Uh, Lincoln's first sign of Morphling every single game. Radiance yes, yes, yes. Just to attack. be safe and also the uh, regenerate, the uh, strength gains and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that was a very. That was when you could morph even when stunned and like. I mean, obviously, like, but while stunned, you could start your morph. It was uh, a fun time, but here we go. They're yeah. going for Roshan. Rolling Thunder is up, but no exorcism for 40. So Radiant Rolling Thunder in the pit is pretty scary here, but with Ray Pack, they can maybe block a lot of the damage. Swashbuckle first, throwing in Celestial Hammer. All right, 25% HP for the first Roshan. Here we go, there's a plasma feel somebody being thrown in the middle of the fight. T1 finished off the main damage. You look, Team Purvis. 40 second update, he's still gonna buy back, but I don't think so. He knows that the fight is pretty much over. Never mind being chased out by Gabby. And Gabby catch Rose? him with the... Uh, yeah. Who got it? Oh, Dino Jim got, got it. Oh man, Gabby, he chased the target. <laughs> he dropped his boots. <laughs> and nobody beat me about the, uh, the Aegis, so the Aegis got stolen, but I don't think that will change any um, kind of resolves out of this big team fight. It's, you know, it's nice. It's a bit of gold and denying ages from Morphling yeah. buys you some breathing room, but it's another fight that T1 win convincingly. Um, and it went about as well as you could hope for Polaris. Unfortunately, they don't have Exorcism or maybe, you know, it goes better and they win the fight. Like, but almost killing Razor before he gets BKB off meant that he had to like completely back off from the fight. It didn't, you know, Razor didn't feel like he got good value from his BKB. Um, you know, a decent rolling thunder up there, but this, the Morphling's just got so much mobility when he can morph into this Tango, chase him using the Swashbuckle yeah. Shield Crash. He just cleans up these fights when he's morphing into Pango. What a great game for Morphling, just like you, you mentioned. <laughs> uh, it looks like they have nothing to stop Morphling at this stage for Purris. Um, the way out of this trouble for Purris, what is it? Um, Get these BKBs and Radiant's win team fights. Like, there you go. Oh, Luna's got BKB, Death Prophet, almost his BKB. They just need to fight five versus five. Like Morphling, oh, Morphling has BKB. That's gonna make it so hard. But I think you still just have you. You can't get into a farm battle against against the Morphling here. Mm. Not even with Luna. I think not even with Luna. Like she, she's not gonna fight. Like. She's not going to keep up with Morphling, even with the Glaives mm. and Mask of Madness. Like, she's got this BKB. You don't get BKB to farm. You, you get this item to, to teamfight, essentially. To fight. Mm. Um, or because your enemy's forcing teamfights, which is partly why I think Morphling gets his. But both teams are kind of playing for this early mid-game timing. Yeah. Yeah, that Ooh. Morphling looks scary. And now they are aiming to take out the mid -game tower. So no more triangle farm for Luna. It looks like there's no resistance Dyer's from the Apuri side. Uh, instead, they are looking to trade at Morph Tower. The other thing is Morph with sidekick getting even more buffs and more scary thanks to the Marcy. But... Okay. Oh, my goodness. Full man smoke. I think yeah, gonna, gonna go in. Some. Yeah. Without the blink on Marcy, the initiation's a little like, you know, it's rebound into dispose, but we saw if Pen goes fast, he's gonna react and swashbuckle away. Oh, Natsumi. 
That's him. Oh, he's the so most important hero of Team Pirates. Okay. Uh, on the BKB, there was a trap set by Natsumi. <laughs> 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 Got him. <laughs> Sampa moving oh, in. Eating in all the Eclipse. And then let's take a look at if they can turn this thing around. The Rolling thund Thunder in. Body McKiss is supported. Here we go with the Black Ball, but he takes a whole damage on Body McKiss. Let's see where is Gabby. It's more like Gabby against the world this time around. Now, can he keep moving forward? Gabby and also the Razor half HP for Gabby. Okay, way from away. This is a big win for Pirates. Yeah, I love it. This is this is the game plan. Get BKBs and team fight. They run at you to team exactly. fight. Exactly. I, I think T1 almost fall into a trap there, like forcing that fight. Uh, you know, we see Zephyr trying to really force his initiation way too mm. hard there. I think this is like this is a point in the game where T1 would benefit from just slowing it down and getting their supports blink daggers. Both Tiny and Marcy. That's their initiation. These two heroes represent the way to start a fight. The tossback or the Marcy with the blink dispose. Get these heroes blinked before you make plays like that because it goes so mm. bad because they have to toss in Marcy and then she can't even use dispose yeah. because Luna has, she gets BKB off. Like it's very easy for Polaris to turn around these fights when the initiation is lackluster. Yeah, it's, it looks so forced in, just you know, <laughs> overextend for Team T1. I believe that is a cuckoo plan. He was like, hey, we already here. I have to land a black hole. Yeah, let's go Set for it up black for hole. But yeah, but the um, the the multiple kisses to counter black hole are quite good. Every time you yep. land it, you gotta deal with all the grand cannon. Yeah, I'd expect Cuckoo to go into the BKB now. He's kind of given up a bit of his farm for his mm. team, but BKB black hole gonna be mostly Dyer's uncounterable until we see a Pengo Basher, and even then, it, you know, you still might get it off. Fortified. Hey, Goss, do you like the uh, BKB over that red pack on the first item? Top tower I think red pack is fine. Like, they're, the item is just so strong for the team attack. fight, and you look at yeah. Polaris' draft, and that's exactly what they want to do. They want a team fight, so... Um, I think it's just, it's more... Like, you know what you're going to get from the item. It's safe. Radiance Whereas Black Hole, maybe you get a good Black Hole off, maybe you don't. So it's like, if you go for a BKB Blink and then, uh, yeah. for whatever oh, reason, there's no good Black Hole something, you've spent all this money and maybe you don't even get to impact the fight. But, all right. We'll see. we'll see if it pays off. I mean, I think it already has paid off. Like, those fights, are, the, all those fights that were winning around Roche and stuff, like, the Wraith Pack was just a big part of. Right now, 23 minutes in the game is all about the uh, vision control, especially for Team Polaris. They gotta try their best to have the visions in the uh, farming area of Luna because Luna still need a lot of farm to just catch up with Morphling. Yeah, we go with a plasma fail. And what T1 doing right now is to kill all the animals inside of the uh, Dire NC. Yep. I'll farm their opponents. Go back yeah. to more economy game they had that like three to four k lead it slipped a bit after that bad fight both teams are smoking up here looking for some action blink dagger is online so that's the key thing that i think t1 were lacking before is this blink initiation with the dispose they don't have the tiny blink he's 300 away but they've got one oh the, uh, the positioning doesn't look very good for team Zephyr's t1 in. but they, they know that the item gap and also the level gap are much bigger yeah, so they're just gonna go in set for sacrifice himself from the dispose now finish him off and a split siphon connected to the uh, razor oh looks like lelouch gonna stand the damage of that marveling gabby is going to be the one who chased everyone of team Paris. natsumi get in through Ooh. a small corner and then that's it the big fight ends with a trade seems to be a good trade for t1 they got the core got the core they force out the exorcism so it's two minutes now where polaris won't want it they don't really want a team fight kisses exorcism down like they're much more ulti dependent on the polaris side whereas t1 their cooldowns are much shorter other than the black hole but we kind of talked about like you know black hole isn't really their team fight like it's yeah. much more about the other heroes um, and Morph and Razor having BKB warrior. is more what T1's Your team fight is about. Mm -hmm. Also, brain. Avalanche and Toss and Amasi disports and stuff. Yeah. Very short. Alright. Might go for a little Dyer's bit more. Uh, Morphing disguise into a Dawnbreaker, throwing Celestial Hammer. Which is. Holy Catch of Korea. Mid lane. Xavius, gotta be careful. Xavius. Getting gone on. And that's an easy kill. Yeah. Hmm. All these unforced errors <laughs> must not happen. I mean, if you want to win against T1, one of the strongest teams in Southeast Asia for Team Poirot. Oh, Zephyr's looking for more. He's got a blink dispose. 
I can. I, I, okay. This one back, but it very short. This damage is enough for Gabby, who's moving into the BKB, and Coco follow up with a black hole. Perfect timing. Yes. Never mind. Die in the rolling thunder. Double kill for Gabby. Yep. Luna barely gets back to the safety of the base with a four star, but that's three dead. They'll push forward. Again, this is what T1 just with shorter cooldowns. Like, they don't have exorcism. They didn't have kisses, and all T1 had to wait for was their BKBs, and then for Zephyr to get, you know, blink dispose on anybody, that hero's gonna die nine times out of ten. So, Gabby's just getting too farmed, and his impact on this Morphling has been very much felt. 10 Man, 0 I mean, 4. Yeah, I mean, this Marcy, uh, if you guys still think that Marcy is pretty balanced, then you must be living in the cuckoo land. <laughs> yeah. All right, into the Rochan pit. Um, they're gonna, I believe this is, this is the first, no, the second ages of the game with the, uh, again, yeah. char. Hmm. Kind of surprised that the this. game is not ending, like, con convincing victory of the T1. Yeah, they're not pulling soup. Often you'll see Radiant teams get, like, a 10k gold lead or something here. Hasn't exactly happened. They scan out Roshan, but it's just too late. I'm curious to see who gets the shard. I think more yeah, more thing will. Okay. Get that multi shot going. All right, so Plasma fail and also spending click and easily get rid of the. Uh, never mind. We're gonna march forward, I believe. Maybe trying to um, deal damage to the mid tier three tower, which is about yeah. to drop. Top tower is it's so hard to play against this Marcy once she gets Blink Aether Lens. Like, you can think you're in a safe position, but her cast range. And her mobility, like a rebound in the blink means she can initiate from like 2k range away, and then like it's like a 500 cast range on your dispose. So you can be far away from Marcy, and then she'll suddenly be on top of you and pulling you in. So it's just so hard. Is under attack. All right, knocking on the uh, porous door. Here we go, the top tier 3 tower about to go down. Nice is forcing back, and they got the core damage dealer, and that's will be diving on the buyback. 70 second. Oh my goodness, turn the BKB for the loot, trying so hard to defend the Pyrex, but I don't think they can stand the damage of both Kyle and also Gepi. Aegis as well, triple kill for Kyle, cleaning up everyone. Oh my. Oh, one kill for Nevermind, can he get Man, Enigma? Can he? No. Kenny, come on! No. Any rampage givers? No. No one's alive, unfortunately. <laughs> Death profit buyback? But uh, I, that may just be it. They're going to get multiple lanes of racks here, it looks like. No one has buyback except Death profit. And at this point, you got to feel like there is no way to win these fights. Like, Enigma's going to have a BKB coming up for your next team fight if the game even gets that far. Uh, but yeah, I think more importantly, we've got to this point where it's just too easy to start Dyer's fights for T1. Yeah. Marcy, like Dyer's none of their cores are like the big playmakers that initiate fights, but all you, when you've got two supports that do it, as, as long as you wait for these blink daggers to come up, like suddenly you've got all the playmaking you need. Yeah. Oh, what a hard game for Poris. I mean, they, in the first 10 minutes of the game, I, I think they put too much attention in the middle lane trying to take the mid tier one down or ganking Razor. Wow. <laughs> Gabby has the one of the easiest game of his life on the Morphling. He's now level 23, ready to slay everyone. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> if, if, if you are the one who has to give the team talk to the team, what would you want to improve in the first game? For if you are the Polaris, yeah. Um, I mean, their lanes went fine. I think it was just some Radiant of the, rota the rotations and team fights with their ultimates. Like, the first two exorcisms were used uh, not yeah. to take towers. Like, the first one was used and he got nothing. The second one was used to kill Razor, which was okay. But, like, they never really took objectives and never really coordinated their team fights with, like, mm. you know, the, the big team fight top where they used all their ultimates and killed nobody. Like, that, that is game losing right there. Yeah. Oh, this was back. Got the core heroes once again. And zero damage out from Jing and also Natsumi. It's a game end right there. Black hole as well. Team White within seconds. Okay. Is Gabby? Is he in the fa going to the fountain? Yeah. Go <laughs> He's trying to throw him in. Okay. Oh, oh, one way. Oh, one more. We always have that one friend. 
Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Takes the rampage. That's a double damage Morphling. I mean, it yeah. doesn't get much scarier than that when it comes to team fights. That's true. Yeah. Morphling even buys the Tome of Knowledge just to get his level 25. Yeah, they're tipping white more. They're like, dude, what are you doing? Take him, take him the rampage away. That's, that's Gabby's highlight reel, but it's good to see Gabby bounce back. <laughs> GG's called. YouTube shot. All right, ladies and gentlemen, T1 takes the lead. 1-0 against Paris. 33 to 10 game score. 31 minutes in. Congratulations. This is the first game. Yep. Some smiles on the faces of T1. <laughs> We saw Whitemon with a bit of a chuckle there. He knew what he did. He's like, yeah, that's 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 my rampage, bro. I'm not giving it to you. Yeah. Um, you know, I think pretty smooth sailing for T1. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely, you know, some doubts about how what, what Razor can do in the mid lane. But I think we saw Carl after like a slowish start, like have a very like there was so much attention like with Gabby just diving in that he could just freely get his BKB and like run at the death prop. Like he had a fight himself where he got an ultra kill. So. Um, all around just solid showing from all, all of T1, I feel. Yeah, and also the support of Team T1 playing very well, especially in the first five minutes of the game, you know, cover, ring up all areas, even stop um, the pulling, then yeah, gang left and right. Um, well, if I am the purist, I, I, I would improve on the uh, game pace. I mean, to, to catch up the pace of the T1, which is much faster, in game number two, hopefully we're gonna get to see them uh, play perform a lot better than this. And the, uh, we still have a series, guys. Don't go anywhere. We're gonna go to the break and we'll be right back for game number two.